Hey guys, welcome back to the Raiding Climb. We're going to 1425 today. Let's play E5, just get a pawn out there in the center. And see what our opponent's going to do here. They're attacking. I'm defending. Nothing crazy here. We're going to see a scotch. So pretty much, I don't think there's a whole lot of other ways to respond to this except to take the pawn. If you don't take the pawn, white's probably going to push it forward. It kind of causes you some problems. So this is pretty much how you have to play this. And we'll go with, I guess, just the main line here. Bishop c5, just developing and attacking the knight. And I think we can play queen f6. I'm thinking through um, what other options we have. Queen f6, it's kind of a weird move normally. Like normally you don't put your queen on f6. But in this particular case, it's just kind of adding pressure to that d4 square. And what you a lot of times will do is put the knight on e7. I'm not an expert against the scotch, but I believe this is the main way to approach this. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other options here. Yeah, I think I think that's that's what we'll do. So let's go queen f6. And I'm expecting probably c3, I think, is the main approach here from white. We have one, two, three attackers. It's only defended two times. So c3, and then I think we just develop our knight to e7. Probably a pretty good, good way to approach it. I'm not sure what white's thinking about. Maybe they want to trade? Um, yeah, okay, so I think we just take here, and the point is we're threatening checkmate, so white doesn't actually have time to do anything with their knight, we're going to take that back later, but by throwing in this trade, uh, that's, that's a good kind of in-between move for us, so I'm just verifying that I'm not making a mistake, but no, this, this has got to be the way. And you can see the, the checkmate threat there. So white has to stop and capture us. They're going to have these double isolated pawns. And then we can capture the knight. There is queen takes b2 as well. But I'm not sure if that's a move that I actually can or want to play. Let's think through this a little bit. If I do take that... If white plays like here, then we can recapture. Hmm. Maybe I can get away with that. It's queen d4, and it looks like it's pretty tricky, though. So on queen d4, I couldn't take the queen, or the knight would retreat. I couldn't take the rook, so I'd have to go for this check. King might move. Then we could take here. But then I have to watch out for this. It's going to get crazy. I don't I don't think I want to go for that. Probably I can just be happy with my two pawn, you know, two isolated pawns and and just just be happy with that. There's also check and then queen takes here threatening the rook. Well, that actually looks like it might be more appealing to me. So Obvious move, just take back is fine, and we're going to be in a great position. But can we get a little bit more? Because if we can force the king to move, that's fantastic. So I think white would have to play g3. We take here. Yes, they could save their knight somewhere, but then we take the rook. Rook is better than a knight. If they save the rook, rook g1, then we take the knight, and we messed up their king side, and we got an extra pawn. So um, I'm just going to verify. Because if I, if I miscalculate something here, I might end up like losing a piece or something. So let's just, just verify. But that looks like a pretty good move. There's no tricks with the queen in this case, because like queen d4 doesn't have the same effect. We could actually, it could still take here. Hmm. I say that, but... Because the issue is we're going to lose our rook at the end of that. That queen d4 move. So... It's kind of scaring me, so maybe maybe I can't get away with what I'm trying to do. Okay, so I thought enough. I think I'm going to go ahead and just capture here. We'll check it after the game and see if I miss something. 
But that queen d4 move really scares me because once white's queen gets in here and I lose my rook, then my knight's in trouble and my king is all of a sudden, you know, not feeling very safe. So maybe, maybe I can't get away with it. <clears throat> and now it's defended, so we don't really have that option anymore. Um, so I'm thinking of developing here or knight to e7. I don't know that it matters. They both look pretty good. Let's go ahead and just go with the knight first. I might want to castle next move. Hmm. All right, so I like that my queen is positioned here because it does stop uh, white from castling. Pretty nice. Um, I'd like to develop my bishop. And maybe even castle queenside. I want to leave that option open. So rather than castling right away, I think what I'm going to do is play bishop e6. And then depending on how white proceeds, I'll decide which way I'm going to castle. So let's go bishop to e6. I'm guessing white's going to play a move like queen e2 is what I would expect. A rook to f1. I don't think that's a good move because the check here now, and I'm going to be able to grab the h2 pawn. So g3, I take it. Pretty happy with that. Rook f2, I could still take it. Still pretty happy with that. Uh, let's just see. There's not really any pressure here that I have to worry about. Everything is defended nicely. So let's go queen to h4. I think that was a slight stake there by our opponent. And here we go. And now we're threatening this pawn as well. Queen to f3, yeah, it looks like a logical move. I do have to be careful here. Rook to h1 looks like it would trap my queen. So notice how the queen can't escape along the diagonal. I wouldn't be able to escape along the file if the rook went to h1. And maybe I would have bishop g4, actually. But I am going to think through this because that could be bad news. And I, you know, all of these squares obviously are controlled. My queen couldn't go there. Bishop g4 is a pretty nice idea. If the rook takes, I take the queen. If the queen takes my bishop, I take the rook. And the queen can't go there to defend the rook anymore. If you go here to defend the rook, then I take the pawn. So maybe I do have this, which if that's true, I could probably just get away with castling here. If not, I would have to retreat my queen somewhere here or here. Yeah, as from what I can see, it should be fine. So I think I do want to go ahead and castle. Ah, what am I saying? What am I saying, guys? If I castle, that's a huge mistake. Because then bishop g4 doesn't work anymore because it's check. Ooh. So yeah, I almost made a big mistake. That would have been a very bad news. Because the tactic that I would use to save my queen would no longer exist. Okay. So with that in mind, um, with that in mind... I mean, I could castle this way, but then I, I don't know if I, at some point, this might be an issue. So, all right, with that in mind, let's actually just retreat the queen, I think, is maybe the simplest thing to do. H3 or H6. We'll go back to H6. So very tricky position there. I almost blundered uh, the queen, which would not be, not be good news. <coughs> Hmm. All right, uh, I'm thinking about castling this way as well. Don't really see a reason not to. Well, let's go ahead and castle. Get the king out of the center. Okay, e5. So I'm trying to kind of identify the threat. I don't really see too much. It does open up these diagonals. But other than that, don't really see a lot happening there. I'm thinking about knight to d5. Looks like it might either force a trade or put some pressure on this pawn, which looks pretty good. And I would be happy to trade. Also, queen g5 is a nice move. Because it threatens this. 
And also the pawn. Hmm. Both of those look pretty good. Let's play knight to d5. Let's play knight to d5. Uh, on queen here, I, I felt like queen f4 was going to be a good good move for white. Um, so that's why I'm going with this one instead. So of course, this is the threat. If white trades, really we could capture either way. Thinking with the bishop. Thinking with the bishop. Go ahead and do that. So we've got a lot of things that are being threatened here. I'm kind of just keeping an eye on all that stuff. At the same time, keeping an eye on my, my pieces as well. Okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to move it back because I gain a tempo on the queen, and I'm still threatening this. Okay, that's fine. And now maybe queen g5 we can play. Okay, so we're threatening the pawn, we're also threatening bishop g4 to win some material here. And, you know, we're up the pawn, so we're pretty happy trading off stuff if we have to. The only trade that I probably wouldn't make would be if queen f4, I probably won't take that, only because white's pawns are so terrible looking, and if I take that, it just fixes it for them. Okay, it looks to me like that's a mistake because of the tactic here. Let's just verify if we didn't mess anything up. Yeah, we could lose a pawn, but I'm going to get a rook, so I'm pretty happy with that. Let's go bishop to g4. <laughs> All right, we'll take the rook. We could also take this, but I think then the rook could block, so we need to take the rook first, and we'll probably take this next. Okay, it's a check, not super concerned. Let's just sidestep. And we still have lots of good targets here. Actually, even rook f8 threatening to win the... Uh... Okay, well, that's just, that's just checkmate. So back rank problems here for white. I see that one. Pretty basic tactic. And, you know, trying to flag your opponent is usually not the best strategy. So let's take a look at that game review. Briefly here. You want to check <coughs> that opening. Okay, 85, not too bad. And let's see. Okay, so that was a mistake because of here. And let me just see the analysis. Yeah, so this was the best move. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's see. I think this is, yep, queen to d4. There's that move that I was talking to you guys about, which is a powerful move. Because if I take here, white saves the knight and recaptures the queen. It also defends the rook. I'd be forced to play a check like this. But I still have the problem of I, I need to take back my knight. But then, this is bad news for me. Yeah, and the engine is saying I was going to be in trouble if this happened. So I'm glad that I caught that during the game. And then also, the other thing I was thinking about doing was queen here. Taking here. But again, there's this move, queen d4. Yep, that's what the engine is saying. And after takes, takes, this is what I was afraid of. Now, engine is saying I can survive. I have to go king f8. But it really was unclear, like, who's better. Like, whose king is safer. I felt like white is because they're going to play knight d2 and castle. And I'm not castling, you know. So got to watch out for those those little uh, tactics. So, but once we took here, just a nice, you know, small advantage for black. And had to be a little careful here. I'll just show you guys what I almost played was castles. Thinking that on rook h1 I could play bishop g4. But I cannot do that because it's a check. And I wouldn't have time to take the rook. Almost, almost made a big mistake there. But all right, let's keep going. 
play a new game. Let me update the wins here, 152. All right, we're going to get the same, maybe the same opening. Let's see. Bend. And you can see, okay, I was going to say, if, if we saw that, you could see the, you know, the value of analyzing your games because we would know exactly what the engine moves were in that line if white were to play it. They, they don't. They play something else. Uh, but you can see how that could be uh, pretty good. All right, let's go two knights defense here. Ah, and, and white is trying to go for the fried liver on us. So we've played the Traxler. Um, we can also play d5. And there's a couple of tricky lines that we could play after that. Um, yeah, let's. I think we'll play d5. And maybe we'll go for, uh, let's see. So usually what I play is knight to a5. Recent, relatively recently, I did a video on the channel with knight to d4. Very tricky line. I'm thinking about playing that one. I don't remember everything, but I think I remember enough that we could probably get by. Let's try this one. Let's try this one. The Fritz variation. Fritz variation. So the point here, it's kind of a trap. And usually what white does is push this pawn forward. And what they're trying to do is unleash their bishop and, and knight and attack here on f7, which is a pretty logical plan. But if they do that, we have um, a little trap. We take it with the queen, and we have something pretty tricky after that. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see if white plays d6. They're thinking about something. I wouldn't be surprised if we see this move. Or maybe they're watching the stream and they're just like, oh, don't play d6. All right, what else do I play? Who knows? Ah, c3. I think that's the best move, actually. I think that's the best move. I'm trying to remember. I think what we're supposed supposed to play is b5 i want to say is that what it is are we supposed to play b5 or something else so the, the issue with b5 is what happens if the bishop just moves i'm trying to remember what do, what, what do i do because then my knight's under attack and i don't actually remember Say we play b5 and the bishop goes back to d3. Let's, let's just hypothetically, what would I play? What would I play? So if I have to move the knight at that point, it just looks kind of silly to play b5. I, I'm like, just pretty sure that's the move. I just can't remember what the follow-up is. I just can't remember what the follow-up is. Like, do we sacrifice the knight? Is that the idea? Like, maybe you just take here, and then you have a fork. And maybe you can pick up your piece back that way. That looks like it could be the idea. But maybe that's why bishop f1, I think, is the best move, because you don't have that. But then what do I play if, if white plays bishop f1? So this, these are some of the... <coughs> Excuse me. Man, I can't talk. It's just some of the issues that you have when you play a trappy line is if your opponent doesn't fall for it, you got to kind of figure out how to, you know, survive the opening and get to a middle game that you can actually have a fighting chance. So I'm, th I'm thinking about just playing knight to f5. I don't, I'm like pretty sure it's not the right move, but sometimes if you, if you go for these super tricky moves and you don't remember what to play, you can actually get into trouble. And that's what I'm afraid of. So a lot of times what I'll do instead is just play like a normal looking move and the game goes on, right? Like, this is normal. If d6 happens, I would just take it with my knight, and I defend that way. But I think that's what I'm going to do. Practically, I think this is a good decision. I'm 90% sure the move is b5. I just don't remember what to do after the, you know, the retreat. So we, we'll check it after the game, and we'll see what I, what I forgot. But for now, I'm just going to go with knight f5.
Oh, all right. So that's an aggressive move by our opponent there. I don't know if it's a good move, but clearly they want to push this and attack us. Um, I think we just take it. I mean, yes, they can play d6. I'm just going to go back here. Yes, they can take here. I'm just going to take. And I don't really see a follow-up. So we'll go ahead and take that. And I didn't have much of a choice there because otherwise I'm just getting forked. So that's kind of a pretty easy decision for me. Yep. I can even play bishop e6 too. So bishop e6 or king e8 actually look to be fine. There's not really a good follow-up with the queen, I don't think. I guess b3 maybe. If I go here, takes, takes, uh, yeah, maybe b3. And white might go pawn hunting. Okay, so with that in mind, maybe I will just go back. Maybe I will. We'll just go here. So we got our piece, and, you know, now we got to try to kind of defend the king a little bit. But I like the fact that we have more development than white does. So I think we're okay. I think we are okay. <laughs> Okay, um, let's go ahead and recapture that. <clears throat> I don't think there's any reason to not take him back. Now we attack the bishop. We can develop this guy next, maybe this guy. Unfortunately, we can't castle. That would be nice, but we could castle by hand. And that just means you, you know, would like move your king, you bring your rook over, and then you bring your king back, and it kind of looks like you castled, but you didn't really castle. Okay, queen to a4 check. Bishop d7 is the move that's jumping out at me. Why? Because I'm developing a piece and I'm gaining a tempo on the queen at the same time. So let's play bishop to d7. Okay. If we take it... Then there's a check. If we block like with the queen, we lose this pawn, which I don't really like. I think what I might do instead is just play move like bishop somewhere. And if white wants to trade, that's totally fine. I'm happy with that. But I want to keep developing, especially in these kind of sharp, aggressive openings. Developing super quickly is, is usually really important. So yeah, I'm, I'm just going to continue. But there's not really a threat here, right? Like I have that well defended. So I don't need to waste my time trading and, and having to deal with another check. I'm just going to develop another piece. And now I have all, all of my minor pieces out. I can start the process of hand castling, like I mentioned, and get my king to safety. And then we're in kind of a normal position where I'm just up a piece. So, okay, they do want to trade, which is fine. I think I'll take with the queen, offering to trade. Three, four, five. I have five pawns. Three, six, seven. Okay, so it's two pawns for a piece. Yeah, I'm pretty comfortable with that endgame if we do go into an endgame. So, take with the queen. Okay. Now I'm going to take with my king, not my knight. Because I would have to move my knight backwards. And I wanted to, you know, get my rooks into the game anyway. Now they're connected. They can go wherever they want. And using your king at the end of the game is a good strategy. So... All right, um, of course, some logical moves would be bring the rooks over. Also thinking about the move e4 to try to stop white from pushing this pawn forward. Because if they play d3, it lets their bishop out. And if I go here first, it's a little bit more difficult for them to do that, maybe. <coughs> yeah, so I think I will play e4. I think it's kind of an annoying move for white. Now they might play f3 and try to go about it this way, which is fine. But also, it's an isolated pawn, which is kind of a weakness. So if I am able to like trade it off, that's another thing that's kind of going through my mind. And <clears throat> already defended, but I think I might want to add another defender. I'm going to go here. And I left this rook here because I'm going to put it on the F file and try to put pressure here. So like knight to g4. And all of a sudden, we're actually getting an attack going here on, on the king. B4, wow, okay. 
But yeah, we could go here immediately, but I think it's going to be much more powerful once my other rook is involved. So let's go here. And what I'm looking at is after knight to g4, we have a tactic, like a sacrifice or something, almost. Might have to set this one up a little bit. Like by maybe by moving this knight first and then jumping in, because then we can actually just take this. Yes. So, all right, I'm not super concerned. Yes, the knight can go here, but I can always just move my bishop or even just leave it. It's defended. I think I want to attack over here. There's like no pieces defending, and I have, look at, I have all these pieces like aiming at the king. So I'm just kind of trying to think through what's the best way to attack. The immediate knight to g4, h3, we could sacrifice, lure the king out, but what's the follow up? Ah, we do have bishop check, and we could take the rook. Normally, two pieces for a rook and a pawn is not worth it. In this case, it might be. But maybe we just start with bringing the knight over. Maybe that's the better option. Because I'm, I'm clearing the way for the rook to be involved. That's what I'm doing. Oh, there might actually even be a nice... Like, let's say the knight moves here. What, can I sacrifice this? Jump in with the knight? Oh boy, let's see. This could be this could be exciting. What's the follow-up? If the king goes back, bam, and then I'm taking this, and white's in big trouble. What if the king comes up, though? Because then my knights are going to be hanging. That's what scares me. Yeah, maybe it's not good enough because king, king here or here looks just too good for white. Almost. Okay, so can we go knight g4? We might lose the bishop. We could just take with the king. Of course, I could just drop it back first. We'd still have the threat on the pawn, which looks pretty good. Yeah, so <coughs> I'm pretty happy with the way that looks, so I'm going to play knight to g4. This is one threat. And this is another threat. And I'm expecting white's probably going to throw in this trade, which is fine. I still have a threat on f2. And I'm still feeling pretty good about my position. So that's, that's fine. How does white deal with this? Rook here or here? What's my follow-up going to be? Maybe we can try to double up the rooks to add another attacker, or even just move my king forward and start kind of getting annoying with the king here on these light squares. Okay, so clearly white is trying to do this. That's pretty obvious. Uh, the issue is I don't care because I'm about to move my rook and take a pawn. So here we go. Now we have a threat of taking this as well. And I don't know how white's going to stop that. I don't think they can. So I think I think white had to defend that, really. <coughs> mm. Mm. Okay, so there's the check. I'm going to move forward. Uh, active king in the end is, is important. I add a defender here. I'm controlling some squares here if the pawn ever tries to push. And it just seems like a nice... It's safe too because the rook can't you know attack me because the pawn's in the way. Okay. Um, I would get attacked. But I'm going to get another pawn. Check. I would be able to get away. Check. I would be able to get away. So... Yeah, here we go. Let's let's grab his, you know, take everything, I guess. Let's take it all. This rook, this rook, king to a6, and I'm still safe. Still safe. So, I'm not worried about it. Let's take this one. Now, you do have to make sure, like, before you take all these pawns that you, you see what's going to happen if the rook attacks you. And make sure you see a way out. But I, I see it, so I'm not concerned. Okay. 
and we have the very powerful threat over here, which is actually just going to lead to a checkmate <coughs> as soon as white stops putting us in check. Take, if the king moves here, that's checkmate. King moves here, that's checkmate. So. And I'm going to go here. Because now there's no more good checks. You can't go there. You can't go there. You can't check me with this rook at all. And my king is totally safe. And um, like I mentioned, we're going to probably have checkmate next move. Next couple of moves. What's my real rating? My real rating is like 22, 2300 in this time control, probably. A little bit higher in Blitz. Okay, so White is trying, but a little bit too late. We'll capture this. And it's not checkmate if I go here because they take. So I'm just going to verify. Is there a checkmate if I take here first? Like, which way do I want to do it is the question. Yeah, I guess this is fine. White can survive a little bit longer by sacrificing the rook. But there's still a follow-up checkmate threat here that they have to deal with. Which they did. All right. And I am going to... I guess we'll just push this forward. Get this rook involved this way. Oh, I can't take it right away, actually. I have to move this first. So we'll come over here. We'll take this. And then probably just something like, depending on what white does, maybe bring this rook to one of these files. Maybe that's the way. I'm just looking for checkmate because I am low on time. That seems to be the, the easiest thing to do. Um, so let's go here. Threaten to come down here. I don't see an easy way for white to stop that. Okay, yeah, they could they could do that, but now it's now it's pre-move. Pre-movable. Whenever you can pre-move everything, you don't lose a lot of time on the clock. Let's go grab the pawn. Get the queen, and we are going to pay attention for stalemates. We don't want to stalemate, but right now I'm not worried. You know, white has at least three more moves over there. Come back with the queen. And. <coughs> just go for the checkmate. All right, so good game to our opponent. We'll check the game review really quickly. we go. Update the win counter here. All right, 83. So we did make a few um, inaccuracies there. Let's see what they were. Oh, right. We were going to check if B5 was the move. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. So yes, B5 was the move. So let's see what it, I was not really thinking what was going to happen after, let's just say Bishop D3. Bishop g4, no, changed its mind. First it said bishop g4, now it's saying bishop f5. Ooh, yeah, very interesting tactic there to save the knight that way. So if white tries to take the knight, we take the bishop. If they take the bishop, the knight can retreat. Okay, so I didn't see that. Definitely need to remember that one for next time. And if white would have played the best move, bishop to f1. Oh, knight takes d5. Ah, just counterattacking the knight on g5. And then we do lose the pawn, and we play king to d8, but we get some 
counterplay over here. And I guess white just castles. And it's this kind of wild position. Okay, so yeah, that's what I couldn't remember. That's what I couldn't remember. And that's a risk. That's a risk that you guys either, you know, when you're going to play a trap like this, you either make sure you study it really well so you remember all those little lines, or you just understand that, like, there might come a moment like this where you just can't remember, or if your opponent's just playing the best moves, where you just have to say, okay, they didn't fall for the trap, that's too bad, and I'll play a solid move and the game goes on, right? And that's what we saw here. And our opponent immediately kind of messed up, going a little bit too aggressive there, and they just didn't have a good follow-up, and then we were fine. By the way, for anybody wondering, the trap that we were hoping for, instead of c3, is the move d6. And white is going for the fork. We actually take with the queen and we let them do it, which is a bad move for them because of this move queen to c6. And all of a sudden, we're attacking all kinds of stuff here. And if they take the rook, they're in big trouble because queen takes g2. They can try to save the rook, but then we jump back to e4. And if they go here, it's simply a smothered checkmate. And if they block with the queen, well, of course, we can just take the queen if we want. So um, that's kind of what we were hoping for, but we didn't get to see it, obviously, in this game, which is how it goes sometimes, right? Okay, new game. So this will put us over uh, 1425. Let's play e4. And what should we play? What should we play? I'll go with the bishop's opening. This is what I teach in my course, and I kind of like, I usually like how it turns out. Knight c3 is kind of the, the normal one, but I could also play knight f3 and just transition back. To, let's go back to the Italian game. Let's go back to the Italian game. I think it's a little bit more. Ah, this is, this is the Blackburn Schilling Gambit, which is very tricky uh, if you go for the bait. If you go for this, the queen comes out, and you got to be super careful. But I think the best thing to do is just take it. Either take it or just castle. I think we just take it. As long as you just take the knight, you don't take the pawn, it's just a slight advantage for white. And now we castle, and everything is, is good for us. But you do have to be careful. You have to be careful. All right, so at this point, I think we're just kind of playing some chess. Now, one thing, whenever you're playing these Italian game types of positions where you have the bishop along this diagonal, you always want to ask yourself, you know, do you have any tactics? And when I see a bishop here that's undefended, and I'm just kind of pairing all this information together, what do you guys notice? There's got to be a tactic, right? So I get a free pawn, black loses castling rights, and I get the bishop back. Now, queen to h5 first almost looks like it would do the same thing, except it doesn't work because the queen would actually defend everything. And then, yeah, I mean, I guess you could still play here and take the bishop, but I don't think that's as good. So yeah, we are going to go for this. Um, you know, just always be scanning, and if something like this pops up, you'll be ready for it. Queen h5 check. Sometimes it's on d5 too. Like if the these pawns are gone, sometimes you do the same thing with queen to d5, like this. It doesn't always have to be on h5. But in this case, this is another way to do it. Okay, and we could go here and attack the rook, but no, it's easy for black to deal with that. So let's go ahead. And actually, do I want to throw in the check first? Or is that not a good move? I could go check, force the king to move. And then take it. I wonder if that's a good move to do or not. Like, would I rather the king be on f7 or on, like, g7 is the question. These are, like, super subtle details that, at this level, honestly, it probably doesn't matter. So I'll just take the bishop. But if I was playing, like, a real game against, like, a, you know, super strong player, I would want to think through, like, may maybe it makes sense to force the king somewhere for some reason. Like, because maybe on g7, it's easier for me to attack it with the bishop or something like that, right? But in this game, it's it's probably not going to matter. All right, let's take the, the pawn. And now, I think I probably will trade. The, you could say 
there's a you know it makes sense to leave the queens on the board because black's king is exposed but the way i'm thinking black has three six pawns i have three six seven eight i have two extra pawns so trading and going into an end game with two pawns up i'm, I'm happy with that right so i am going to trade and i could play f3 or d3 or knight c3 to defend um, f3 looks nice because it really just shuts down all these squares d3 is nice because it lets out my bishop knight c3 is nice because i'm developing a piece um oh so yeah we'll go knight c3 i think I, I really think all of those moves would be totally fine in this position he's attacking it again again i have this question and i'm gonna go with d3 because it allows my bishop to come out that makes the most sense i think but again, f3 would have been fine as well. And I'm just kind of solidifying my position. Okay, looks like black wants to play d5, which is fine. I think I'm going to play bishop g5. <coughs> again, <coughs> I'm pretty happy to trade. Because if you imagine, both rooks, both knights, and bishops are, are all traded off. That's going to be an easy game to win, right? A king and pawn end game with two extra pawns. That's going to be relatively straightforward. So... If I see an opportunity to trade, I will probably go ahead and take it. Okay, they don't want to trade. And it looks like they want to go here. I think I might just play f4. Uh, you know, I have these extra pawns. Why not use them? It helps control different squares and potentially activates my rook on the king. So maybe something like this and push this pawn forward. Seems like it makes a lot of sense. Interesting move. I guess they want to go here, which I don't, you know, I don't really care too much about. Um... Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and, and reposition my other rooks. So I have both rooks behind the, the pawns that I would like to start pushing forward. And what's going on here? I don't really know. Um, let's see. Do we want to play f5 now? I think that makes sense. Yes, they can take, but we can take back. Then our rook is nicely positioned. That looks pretty good, pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead with f5. Okay, of course, we're going to take with the pawn, not the rook, because we don't want to lose material. h6, all right, it's kind of what we expected. So, here looks okay. Um, here looks okay. I could throw in this move actually first, while I still have the option, and that's that looks really good. Getting your rooks on the seventh rank usually is pretty powerful. So I think I'm going to go there, and if the king goes back, I'll just retreat to h4, which still defends my rook. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Because sometimes black can play a move that would prevent you from doing that in the future. Like if they bring their rook over or something, then you no longer go there. So I'm going to do it while I have the opportunity. And then, like I said, we'll just retreat the bishop after that. Actually, I could even play rook here. Ah, uh, but then my pawn's going to be hanging. I was going to say I could play rook here. The idea that I could go check, the king moves up, I could go check. Yeah, I know it doesn't actually quite work. No, so I'm not going to do that. I am going to save the bishop. I'm just going to go back, keep it defending the rook. And even though we're up the two pawns, we also have the benefit that this bishop is not developed. And that's a big problem for black because the rook can't come out. And where do you develop the bishop to? You can't go here. Because if you go here, I'm going to attack the knight. And then once the knight moves, I'm going to take the bishop. So that's kind of an issue for, for black. All right. So I think what I'm going to do is play g4. If the rook comes over, I could defend. If this happens, I could push. Then I'm going to have two pawns. We'll go ahead and do that. And I think that's what we're going to see. H3. And I'm expecting H5, and I'll just push by. All right, there you go. And now what I've done is... Oh! We'll see if our opponent sees it. What I've done is blunder. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. All right, guys. Oh, boy. Okay. 
That was a big mistake. A very big mistake. Wow. Oh, man. All right. Well, I think we can potentially still win because we have these pawns rolling, but all of a sudden, the game got really difficult. Man. It, ha it happens to everybody. It happens to everybody. You get a little bit overconfident, and then, bam, you lose a rook. You just lose a rook. Wow. All right. How are we going to do this? How are we going to make a comeback here? How are we going to do this? We got to get the knight involved. That's for sure. Man, I can't believe that happened. Oh boy, guys. All right. I might play b4, actually, because I'm hoping the knight blocks the bishop, because then I can use my rook here. Yeah, now we're just losing. I mean, you can't, you can't just give away rooks like that. All right, but we have the two pawns, so somehow we have to, we have to come up with some shenanigans here. It's not over yet. That was a huge blunder. That was a huge blunder. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> this could be it this could be the first loss I mean it had to happen eventually right I just didn't expect it to happen like that I did not expect it to happen like that okay they put the knight over there I'm going to play a3 to put that down yeah the, the bishop the, yeah okay we're going to go here I'm going to try to play fast and hopefully get them to play quickly and maybe we can catch them in a and a little blunder here. So we're just going to defend and, and not make it obvious, you know, what black should do to win. I, I, their pieces are just perfectly positioned, though, to stop these pawns, which is unfortunate. I'm looking at this. I really want to play rookie one here. Oh, okay. What a, wait a minute. That's an interesting looking move. A very interesting looking move. They just want to take my pawn. It's it's that simple. Um, we could throw in the bishop here. Trying to mix it up, trying to get a little tricky here. Trying to, to stop them from doing what they're, you know, clearly trying to do. They just want to take my pawn, right? So I'm trying to kind of make that not so easy. If they want to do it now, they have to be willing to give up the exchange, which which gets me a little bit closer to, a, you know, not being down so much material. They move the rook here. What am I going to do, though? What am I going to do? It's just too bad that I can't get these pawns rolling because of the this. That is the issue. If they go here, I guess we're just going to go back to g5 and just try to prolong the game. I think if we get it, you know, low enough on time, we can flag them. Worst case. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. How do we just kind of prolong the game here? Keep everything as defended as possible. Notice the knight can't really come in because we have a check. So that's good. That's a good news for us. And, okay. I will go back at least once. Honestly, I might take a draw in this game just because the blunder was so bad. I might take a draw. I, they're probably not going to want to draw. So I'm going to let them figure out something new to do. Aha, here we go. Okay. Okay. 
Is there any way to defend the pawn? I don't think so. I don't think I can save the pawn. That's too bad. <clears throat> oh. Oh, if they go here. Oh, that is... That is a nasty checkmate. Wow. So they have to go here. Just noticed that. So here, I only move king here. And what do I do? I can throw in the check this way. Or I can play h4 and just plant. That's, that's not an easy checkmate to see. That's not an easy checkmate to see. Wow. Wow. I can't believe that just happened. Oof. Oof. My goodness. Oh my goodness. I mean, look what look at this. Like what is going on here? Like what is going on? These pawns are like heroes. Look at that. Okay, well, what can we learn from this? What can we learn from this game? <laughs> oh my. Accuracy 67. Wow, that's that is a low accuracy. I mean, I understand we blundered the rook, but come on. We both had brilliant moves. <laughs> We'll see what the brilliant moves were. My brilliant move was, okay, the sacrifice there. That makes sense. And what was our opponent's brilliant move? Rook takes f5. Interesting. I didn't think that was a good move. Okay, weird. All right, guys. Oh, my performance rating was 1250. Wow. All right. Let's take a look. So he tried the gambit. We played the best move. We got into a good position. They made the mistake, we capitalized on it. Everything was going as planned. We traded the queens, we were developing. It was a super easy game. And, you know, the good example of how an easy game can you know, become a loss, right? Yeah, look at that. I mean, I think everybody does this, right? You get focused on something that's happening in the position. Right? And you're like, okay, well, the way that you deal with this is G5. You get the two pawns. Everything looks great. I, I was playing very quickly here. I remember, right? Yeah, two seconds. And I just forgot that, that I needed the bishop to defend the rook. I just forgot about it for a second. So, good lesson here. You blunder. Do you resign immediately? Do you panic? Do you, you know, what do you do, right? I said, okay, what do I still have going for me in this position? Well, I still have these pawns, and, you know, the rook is behind it, uh, black is not developed, and so I tried to kind of just make the best of that, push forward, unleash the bishop, a lot of times if you have two pawns, you put them on opposite colors of your bishop, and you just get a lot of squares that are controlled, okay, and then <clears throat> here, you know, I was just trying to make it awkward for, for the knight, where's it going to go, are you going to go here and just block in all your pieces, or are you gonna go over here on the edge of the board? Which, okay, why did it, why was that a blunder? Oh, I missed a tactic here. I missed a tactic here. Okay, before I look, I'm gonna try to find the tactic. I'm gonna try to find the tactic. Does anybody see the tactic that I missed here? Anybody at all? What did I miss? Was it? It wasn't F6 to try to push, right? Because can I get away with that? Check. And then I move, and then I push, and then... Bishop can move, and I... Oh, I get... The, maybe that was the move. Is it F6? Let's check the analysis. That's my, my guess. No. It's not F6. Any? Did you guys... Did anybody say it? Yeah, somebody did say it. Somebody did say it. Hmm. Greg, thank you for the super chat, for being cool under pressure. Thanks. All right, move is bishop g3 check. 
I don't understand why it's so good. Let's see. The king moves somewhere. Let's say he goes here. Now f6 with check. Okay. Okay. So let's say the king goes to d7. Now f6 anyway. And then f7. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, I missed that one. Interesting. Basically, it was a way to get the pawn rolling and, and black was, was going to have a hard time stopping it. Okay. I didn't see that. Anyway. Yeah, I mean... Wow. I don't know what to say. I, I have no words. <laughs> I have no words. Got lucky. We did get over 1425, though, so... I'm going to call it... Uh, call it a day. Coughing a little too much, so I got I to gotta stop for my voice sakes, but... Hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, guess I have to go make a video out of this somehow. It's ridiculous. All right, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Peace out. Stay sharp. Play smart. Take care. You know, all the good stuff. See you next time.